Hello, this video is a little bit of a departure from retro gaming, but it is still retro. And so what I thought I would do was after all these years, finally go ahead and digitize my cassette tape collection. You know, cassette tapes weren't supposed to last more than 30 years, at least not to my knowledge. Magnetic media was supposed to break down after a while. So I never expected these tapes to actually last forever. So it's actually about time that I digitize them. So this video covers my journey through the digitalization of my tapes. Is that a word? And I wish I could share more of what was actually on the tapes than I'm actually able to do. And that's due to YouTube copyright protections. But having said that, I hope you enjoy what I've produced. When I set out initially to do this video, what I was thinking of doing was purchasing a unit or a device like this, a cassette to MP3 converter, which will take a cassette tape that you hit play on and through the USB port, it will plug right into your computer and then using software such as Audacity, you can select the microphone to the USB microphone that's plugged into and then record directly the audio coming off the device. This is one of those devices that I purchased off eBay for $15 and unfortunately due to a, a noise issue uh, this turned out to be not a good purchase so so what happens is when you play a tape it does function it plays tapes it it has all the functions rewind uh, reverse fast forward um, it even will sw swap the tape direction when it gets to the end of the tape and it has a release for the door the door release and pretty much it has a DC input but you don't really need um, external power to this. Normally when you're using this, when you're using this device, you're gonna be plugged directly into your computer because you're gonna plug this USB cable in. But the problem that I had with this, when a tape was playing, there would be a little bit of noise, a little bit of tick tick, you know, and then a few seconds would go by, tick tick. every couple of seconds a little click of noise and I thought maybe it's just in my microphone or in my my earbuds and maybe it's not really recording that noise it did come with these uh, cheap earbuds that you that so it, you know and the price for this was $15 and I, I wouldn't recommend I wouldn't recommend it so unfortunately now what I did discover and I, I should have research this a little more before I, I made this purchase was that you don't need you don't need to buy a new a brand new technology in order to do this it's so easy if you have a computer at home you can just take if you have any player you can take the output from the phone jack or from your ears and then plug that into your microphone jack on your PC and do the same thing so instead of having the audio come in through the USB, it can come in directly through the line in on your computer. And what I did was I used that and, and this device here turned out to be, of all of my other devices, turned out to be the best or one of the best, including the big boom boxes and uh, even more modern technology that you would think should have should still work but problem is those uh, newer devices had burned out or they had stopped working or the bands no longer worked so so what my my whole project was I had I had a number of tapes and about a dozen or so that I had just thrown these labels on while I was doing my project all of these tapes were recordings off of off of the radio at various times and some of them even had like my voice on them at, at different things at different times 
I, I had I discovered on one of the tapes I had my uh, my mom's on one of them and then on one of them I have a, uh, a recording from back in the late 80s there was a, a song that was dedicated to me on a rock station on a heavy metal station and I I'll share that with you Fate's Warning and Kyrie Eleison, a dedication for Glenn, uh, getting out to him from Bones. And what did we have before that? Some Overkill with Use Your Head, a couple of bands from back east. A couple of the devices that I tried, that I also tried to, to see how it would work, one of them was this old Radio Shack, which doesn't play very well. The problem I have with this one is it plays tapes, but it plays them too slow. So you, it sounds like, you know, it's, it plays it not the right speed. This was a radio that was gifted to me by, by my mom, just kind of out of the blue. Um, I had looked at it at the store, and I think she paid attention one time, or that, that, at, at that time, and she picked it up for me later. And it, it, to this day, it blew me away. And I have, it has this leather case. This cool leather case. It had it had a little bit of damage over the years, but it still rocks the case and the antenna and the speakers. But this one, when you hit play, you can hear the motor spinning, but the wheels don't turn right here. So it unfortunately needs some work, and it's not something that I know how to fix. I might tackle that myself at some point, but I, I don't know. If I, if I knew someone who could fix these I you know for a reasonably reasonable amount, I, I would send it out to have it repaired because it, this one has um, sentimental value to me. And then the last one that I tried was this Talk Boy, which I picked up fairly recently. And this one plays really good. So uh, between, between these two... They've lasted through the years. This one plays very well, and I've actually had, uh, uh, I've had, I have some audio that's a little bit difficult to understand, and so it's nice to have a different, different uh, out, output to listen to it on this one versus this one to see if you could quite understand it, which sort of brings me to a, a point. I have some audio of me and a friend we're playing a video game, and. But the quality of it, unfortunately, is so bad. I think I need a natural learning algorithm to uh, decipher it. And I, I haven't been able to find software that could uh, just... Because there's so much noise in it, I really wanted to be able to just filter out all the noise and just hear the voices in the background. And I tried that in Audacity, and there's what things you can do, but it just wasn't good enough <laughs> for what I could do. Now, when I was speaking of the bigger radios... Uh, this one here, when you hit play on it, it crunches the tape. It doesn't crunch it, but it sounds like it's, if you hit, if you just let it go, it sounds like it's going to eat the tape. So I have a few of those types of problems. And then I dug this one out too, which is, I think, I love these old classic radios. And this one here, when you press play, nothing happens on the tape, unfortunately. So pretty much... The tape players have not stood the test of time. And then I have these right here. Now, the only pro problem I have with these is these are the micro cassettes. And I just need to, I just needed to find the right uh, jack, the output to, because you can't just plug those earbuds. They don't fit. It's a 2.5 millimeter. And I have, I have a lot of memories on those tapes there, so I have yet to go through. One of these tapes was from a friend of mine named Todd, and I've since lost contact with him. I don't know where he's at, but he made me this tape, and I think it's, on one side, it's him playing some guitar riffs, and then on the other side, it's actual music like... Uh, um, heavy metal music, like from Metallica, but done in with instrumentals. Um, I've never uh, heard anything like it before, and uh, I would share it, but I'm afraid it'll get copyright stricken. 
if I play any of these any of this stuff on these tapes. Uh, a couple of cool th things that I had on these tapes. I have two uh, Dr. Demento. I have the Funny Five from 1982, I believe, and then I have also the the interview that uh, Dr. Demento did with Ross Bag Ross Vasarian uh, with the Chipmunks, with, with Alvin and the Chipmunks. And uh, I would play that, but I'm pretty sure it's copyrighted also. And I know Dr. Nemento is selling his own uh, tapes and streaming services on his website. I've just checked that out. And I thought that was pretty cool. If you're really into Dr. Nemento and you want to go check out his uh, back catalog, you can either subscribe to his streaming service. And it's kind of expensive at 100 and $49 a year, but it does offer a lot of content. And then the other option you have, it looks like you can download uh, for $2 per episode. You could download the, like, if you wanted, you can go to a particular night and just download that one for $2. So, anyway, uh, that was a little bit of a cruise down memory lane here, and I'll be playing a few clips from some of these tapes uh, that don't have music on them. I hope uh, some DJs and stuff like that content is not copy protected, and if it is, I'll have to clip it out. But anyway, that was it for this video, and thanks for watching. Ninety six seven K Cal rocking and rolling you through a Monday evening there with something from Def Leppard tune called Rock of Ages off their Pyromania LP. Good sounding stuff there too. It's about two minutes after nine o'clock. Good evening, you got Marcus hanging out with you, and I'm sitting in for Daryl tonight as well as all week long. Daryl's taking off on vacation, partying it up big time up at Yosemite. And uh, tell you what, tomorrow during the lunch hour, you want to join our very own Cliff Roberts as he spins. Cut. Donna Cup. How old is Donna today? Thirty-four. Thirty-four. His birthday thing is becoming a regular on 99.1. I can have some other birthdays here. Where are they? Oh, yeah. Mike Lopez is 16 years old. And then Angela Chamberlain from San Bernardino is 12. And I guess, because we're doing this for you all, it's the Rialto All Fifth Store Birthday Choir. Hit it! On approved credit. Jackhead Pontiac GMC trucks located at the corner of Holton Central in Montclair. Don't be a burglar's next target. Learn how to protect your home and join Operation Crime Alert. If you'd like more details, give me a call on the listener lines. It's the Beach Boys. Happy holidays from 96.7 KCAL.